iOS 16 released to the public a few months ago. We've been using it full time ever since, and it's one of the buggiest, but also feature rich updates we've seen in many, many years. So I thought we'd talk about the current state of iOS 16, what to expect in the future, whether or not you should install it. But first let's visit some of the features we actually probably forgot about because with the introduction of iOS 16, Apple added hundreds of features, changes, and updates with iOS 16's initial release. They had a customizable lock screen with widgets, a new wallpaper picker, notification changes that swipe up from the bottom, a new home app, duplicate finders in both photos and contacts, changes to messages that would let you edit and undo and unsend and change things over and over. We also got updates to mail and Safari maps, dictation, accessibility, and more also privacy updates with lockdown and much, much more. In fact, there's over 300, maybe even over 400 changes in total, many of them very small, but those major features were pretty impressive. With iOS 16.0.2 following not close behind, we had fixes for the camera. We had fixes for that copy and paste bug. We had updates to unresponsive touchscreens on some iPhones. With iOS 16.0.3, we had a call notification fix. We had issues with CarPlay that Apple fixed where there was a low mic issue. We also had a camera launching slow fix. And we also had mail crashes on launch fixed. So those were bug fix updates. Then with 16.1, we gained a few different things such as the battery percentage on things such as the iPhone 11. So with the iPhone 11, we gained the battery percentage in the upper right as we didn't have it originally. And then also we gained clean energy charging iCloud shared photo library, live activities were finally available. We got updates to matter for the home app. Apple fitness plus without an Apple watch updates to books and more. Then we had iOS 16.1.1 where Apple limited airdrop in China, where it was changed to 10 minutes for everyone. Apple wallet added Colorado as a license option. And then a few days later or so we had Apple adding satellite connectivity separately, just pushing that. And it was added to the iPhone 14 models with iOS 16.1.2. Apple improved compatibility with wireless carriers and improved crash detection optimization on iPhone 14 models with iOS 16.2. Apple brought in Apple music, sing and other visual changes in music. They added 5g in India, added the Freeform app for every everyone to use and collaborate with added accessibility updates, new widgets for things such as sleep and health airdrop for everyone around the world so that it was everyone for 10 minutes. They also added live activities for the Apple TV app finally, and then messages, updates, Safari updates, notes and weather updates, updates to shortcuts, updates to podcasts and bug fixes, always on display changes and advanced data protection. And now we're on to iOS 16.3 betas. We've had a huge amount of changes, but is it any good? Well, first let me say that I love getting all of the new features. It makes the phone feel like you keep getting something that's always getting more and more and gets better options, gets better over time. And with all of those features do come compromises with stability. The more you add, the more complexity you add, not only for the user, but also for the programmers and developers to try and keep everything running reliably. And so there's some things I would like to see Apple change with this. First of all, stability with all those changes, the stability has just been pretty poor this year around things such as the lag from the home screen on the latest iPhones. This occurs for some people, other times it doesn't occur, but this is something that if you're playing a song, you swipe home, it goes to the dynamic Island and it just stutters for some reason. This sometimes comes and goes, a reboot will fix it, but it's something that everyone seems to be experiencing over time. And I'm not sure why with the updated phones, you really wouldn't expect that. Also notifications seem to be something that a lot of people don't like where you have to scroll up from the bottom to show them. I would love an option to maybe switch to the top live activities are great, especially for flights. If you've used the flighty app, you can go into the app. And if you subscribe to pro, here's just an example here, a random flight swipe home. You'll see it in your dynamic Island or as a live activity on the lock screen. That part of iOS 16, I think is fantastic. However, with certain things, it's just not that great. 
stability, like I said, and also battery life. The battery life in general with iOS 16, some people report is really great. Others report that it's just terrible. So depending on what you're doing, if you're not running a beta and you're running a stable version, typically battery life seems to get you through the day. However, many people complain that Apple is degrading battery life over time to get you to upgrade. But I would say the iPhone 13 pro max actually still gets better battery life than the 14 pro max. So in my experience, that doesn't seem to be the case. However, the battery life definitely has suffered through the previous updates and Apple continues to fix it, but they haven't addressed it specifically. Overall battery life is usually getting me about six hours of screen on time. If I'm lucky, sometimes only four hours of screen on time. It really depends on the day, but I have found that certain apps were running in the background. And if I cancel those, delete them, it fixes some of the issues. So I think there's bugs, not only with iOS, but with some of the apps still using data or information such as location when they're not supposed to. Now, even with the lag that I mentioned with some of the things within iPhone 14 pro max with the dynamic Island, or just lag in general, performance seems to be okay with iOS 16, meaning that on older phones, the iPhone 10 that I have here is performing really, really well, whether that's just opening apps, we go into the app store, you'll see it's loading over Wi-Fi. We'll hit continue as I haven't gone into it since updating. But if we go to Geekbench, we can see that Apple's actually not slowing down the phones over time as people were concerned about that. In fact, I get messages about that almost every day. You'll see with the benchmarks, we have 902 for single core, 2,460 for multi-core. If we go back into the history, since I've run this multiple times, you'll see that we're currently on iOS 16.1.1 on this device, but that just gives you an idea that they're not changing things. If we scroll down to maybe February of 2022, where we were on iOS 15.4, we had 920 for single core and 2,465 for multi-core compared to 2,460 for multi-core and 902 for single core. So it's right at the same level, only a couple points better on single core, a little bit less on multi-core, but this changes every time you run it. That's a good sign as it doesn't seem to be performing any different. Really the only time it performs differently is if you don't change your overall battery if you're having low battery health. So this one is at 88%. It's still at peak performance and iOS 16 seems to be running really, really well on it. So typically that leads me to a few things. Should you install iOS 16 at this point, if you're running iOS 15, well, that really depends. All of those features that I went over before, if you really value them like I do, such as maybe the privacy feature where we have secure data protection and the messages updates alone, where we can undo send and things, those are worth it alone to me. However, if you don't care about any of those, Apple continues to update security on iOS 15. How long they'll continue to do this though, is hard to say. If we go to their security website within Apple's security website, you can see the last time they updated, it was just not too long ago with iOS 15.7.2. They continue to update this for many phones. However, you won't be able to get them on all phones. So if you're thinking of updating and you want the features, I think it's pretty good at this point and it's only get, going to get better. After three months, iOS continues to improve and I think Apple will make it better over time, but I also think Apple needs to rethink some of the ways iOS works. They need to make it more stable. I think we should have unified settings within apps. So as we have settings here, this is okay, but certain things such as the camera, it would be great to have all of our settings here, or maybe under Safari have all of the settings under Safari. And the same is true with mail instead of having to go back to settings every single time. So I think there's things they can improve. I think the amount of touches on the lock screen to customize something is far too many. I would like a simple option aside from a full customization option. Just let me pick a wallpaper and be done with it. If I don't want widget widgets, maybe have default stock versions of this instead of having to select my widgets individually. So instead of having to hit a bunch of buttons over and over and over, I think it's just not that intuitive right now. And I think there could be some improvements with that. It feels very un Apple like, and there's a lot of hidden features all over the place. And so that makes for good videos, but it doesn't make for a good user experience typically because there's just too many things that you can find such as the 3d or haptic touch. Some people just don't even know it's there. So I think there should be different ways to sort of show users all of the different features, but either way, 
I think we'll see some big changes with iOS 17. At least I'm hoping we will maybe some stability and simplification, but either way, let me know your thoughts about iOS 16 after three months. I think it's getting better, but I definitely think it needs some work. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.